<coughs> hello everyone welcome back in this video we'll be dealing with the other two case laws uh for the prevention of corruption act topic 4 of our case ma isme abhay chotala ka case or cbi securities fraud ka case we'll be dealing with for that matter we need to understand section 90 197 of crpc in relation with section 19 of the prevention of corruption act jaisa maine main jaisa ki maine aapko bataya section 19 ke andar sanctions mentioned hain jo public servants pe applicable hote hain wo cases mentioned hain jin cases mein public servants pe sanction lag sakta hai nahi lag sakta hai you can always look at it for deeper reference but i'll give you a, a brief understanding of this very comprehensive section 197 of crpc seeks to protect an officer from unnecessary harassment who is accused of an offense committed while acting or perpetrating uh, to act in discharge of his official duties and thus prohibits the court from taking cognizance of such offense except which the previous sanctions of the competent authority except with the previous sanctions of the competent authority this is the line that changes everything so why jo pre sanctions hai na wo section 19 mein mentioned ki jab sanctions lag chuke hote hain in 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 cases mein hum log sanctions nahi laga sakte ya fir in 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 cases mein ye prerequisites hain to basically section 19 197 of crpc criminal procedure code ka uh, purpose hi yahi hai ki uh, jo false mal malified cases lagte hain allegations lagte hain public servants pe ki isne mujhse ghus li hai isne fraud kara hai isne bribery kari hai etc etc usko curb karne ke liye ki <coughs> jo jo ek honest employee hai public servant uske upar koi koi jhoota ilzam nahi laga pae so this is something that has been established for protecting the public servants against all the harassment and torture and uh, uh, the possibility of them being deceited. <coughs> Moving on, public servants have been granted such special protection to shield from malicious or vexatious, uh, vexatious prosecutions. However, such shield cannot be used to protect the corrupt officers and if a public servant dishonestly indulges in teach, cheating or fabrication of records then such act cannot fall within the ambit of discharge of their official duty you understand right uh, <clears throat> intention to ye hai ki pub, uh, public servants ko bachana hai lekin agar public servant nahi apne against uh, jo evidences the unko fabricate karne ki unko forge karne ki koshish kari hai then that will not fall under the ambit and this act will not be applicable uh, and will not be put into practice to protect the public service the test for deciphering moving on uh, point number three the test for deciphering whether an act falls under the ambit of discharge of official duty or not is something that has to be applied the alleged act or omission of public servant must have a reasonable or direct connection with the discharge of his official duties to attract the requirement of obtaining prior sanction under section 197 of CRPC. <coughs> the ambit of discharge of official duty is the critical word here. <coughs> Jis act ko karte hoi public servant ne offense commit kara hai it can be any offense uh, jo poc ke andar hai kya wo act public servant ki duty ke ambit mein aata hai indirectly directly was he doing the act in consequence of his direct uh, in consequence of the direct scope of his employment the office he is holding was he discharging any official duty that he was assigned with uh, because of the proposition he holds so these are the things that you will have to look for for making section 197 applicable it has the offense has to be committed while he was discharging his official duty not something which is remotely related ki uh, i'll help i'll make you explain this through an example for example i'm in the electricity department and someone from uh, the 
रोड डेवलपमेंट डिपार्टमेंट फ्रॉडुलेंटली मिसलीडिंगली गेट्स आउट सम इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम फ्रॉम मी विच आई वॉज कम्प्लीटली नॉट अवेयर ऑफ आई डू नॉट हैव एनी थिंग टू डू विद the electricity uh, sorry with the road construction department i was not aware what the purpose of the information passed was is going to be i was just doing what i was doing in the ambit of my duty some official from the public uh, uh, road construction department asked me for some information and i passed it on because that was my duty as the public servant but uh, that was used for wrong purposes so i as the employee of electricity department cannot be held liable okay ye mere upar koi ilzam nahi lag sakta agar lag raha hai to fir 197 uh, applicable ho jayega of crtc so to protect me <coughs> so moving on section 197 of poca no court shall take of cognizance of an offence punishable under section 7 11 13 and 15 which was substituted By, uh, by section 7 10 11 13 and 15 so these are the various acts of misconduct bribery corruption etc etc which are mentioned under the poc alleged to have been committed by public servants except with previous sanctions <laughs> moving on abhay singh chotala versus cbi it's a rather uh, recent case it's from 2011 if you're a law student you must understand that 2000 anything beyond 2005 is considered recent for us uh, otherwise case uh, line up from maybe 1950s 60s 70s that is where the major disputes which were the flaws the guidelines had to be fleshed out regarding all the gaps that were in the legislation which the court has more or less covered but you know every day law is evolving something or the other scenarios coming up so it's a constant battle for betterment thanks to the judiciary uh, so the facts of this case were the case revolves around mla abhay singh chotala who was acqu- accused of amassing the wealth disproportionate to his source of income he was subjected to a trial under section 13 Uh, clause one sub clause e and section thirteen clause two of the POCA, along with section one zero nine of the Indian Penal Code thirteen one or thirteen two. आपको पता होगा one zero nine होता है punishment for abetment. Abetment is what what is abetment? When you entice someone else, when you push someone else to do something wrong. A charge sheet was filed against uh, against him by the CBI. सेंट्रल ब्यूरो ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन इसकी मैंने आपको पावर एंड फंक्शन बताए थे ना प्रीवियस वीडियो में यू कैन मैंशन दैट योर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू स्पेसिफाई लिटिल बिट ऑन दियोरी वॉट द स्कोप एंड फंक्शन एंड द पावर एंड अथॉरिटी एक्सरसाइज इज कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ सी बी आई आर फॉर दैट यू कैन रेफर टू वन ऑफ माई प्रीवियस वीडियोज इन द सीरीज the <coughs> Central Bureau of Investigation conducted a search and seizure in discrimination. Uh, indiscriminating uh, and and seized indiscriminating in documents which revealed that the father of the appellant had acquired movable and immovable properties of worth one thousand four hundred sixty one crores, and the appellant himself has acquired wealth largely disproportionate to his income source. This is very very critical. Largely disproportionate to his income source. Can you imagine the amount of stake? इन केसेस में जो इन्वॉल्व होता है जस्ट इमेजिन वन थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड सिक्सटी सेवन करोर्स दीज मिनिस्टर्स दीज एम एम politicians are not able to match up to those standards of integrity and end up doing things like that but thanks to cbi and our poca that everything is being supervised pretty well isme jo relevant provisions hain section 13 clause 1 mein kya mentioned hai when a public servant is said to have 
committed the offense of criminal misconduct section 13 clause 2 mein jaisa maine aapko bataya prescribes the punishment for criminal misconduct section 19 clause 1 mein lays down the scenario in which previous sanction shall be required for prosecution prerequisites jaisa ki maine aapko bataya tha jisme jo hai majorly do hi issues hai whether sanction under section 19 of the prevention of corruption act was necessary against both the appellants which sanctioning authority is qualified to remove member of legislative assembly from office of member of member of mla uh, office of mla <coughs> what is the authority that can exercise this provision ki kya previously usko us cheez ki saza mil chuki hai koi sanction uske against pull ho chuka hai तो क्या POC के अंदर फिर से उसको सजा मिलेगी? You get the intention of uh, uh, establish uh, for uh, mandating section 19 right? Uh, एक ही offence के लिए दो बार सजा नहीं मिल सकती। <coughs> Appellant का contention सबसे पहला ये था on the day when the charges were framed, both the appellants were admittedly public servants and under section 19 one of the act, the court can could not have taken cognizance un, unless there was a sanction. In you know, section 19 clause 1 ka uh, defense liya or kaha ki hamare upar abhi tak sanction nahi pull hua tha. Jo authority designated hai hamare upar sanction pull nal karne ke liye usne abhi tak kuch nahi kara tha to court kaise cognizance le raha hai. How is the court taking the matter under their charge? How is the court taking matter under their discretion, their power, their authority. The courts relied on two very, very critical judgments. Very important. Prakash Singh Badal versus State of Punjab and KK. Uh, sorry. <coughs> Karu, Karuna Karan versus State of Kerala. Dono mein hi similar scenarios. Hi the court held with respect that the present case it was rightly to rely on the judgment passed in Prakash Singh Badal. It was held that the appellant has misused his power, clear cut, and was holding the office till the date on which he took cognizance, which they took cognizance, and there was no need for sanction under Section 19 of POCA, as stated. The appellant has abused entirely, entirely under different offices or of different office or offices. That one, <coughs> that the one which they were holding on the date on which the cognizance was, was taken, and therefore there was no necessity for sanction under section 19 of the act. Court ne clearly kaha ki section 19 can the previous sanctioning ki of the designated authority. It can be in this case was the member, was the legislative assembly. Uh, as far as I can understand from the case, was not necessary because the the case is clearly of a public servant who has committed an offence of corruption while they were <coughs> still under the ambit of POCA. They fall under the Public uh, Prevention of Corruption Act. They were a public servant when they, when they committed the offence and they were discharging their public duty. <clears throat> you get it right? Clear and cut. P previous cracks can sanction ki koi zarat nahi thi. Moving on. <clears throat> Central Bureau of Investigation, Bank Securities and Fraud Cell versus Ramesh Healy, 9-2016. Again, a very recent case. This case ke, uh, may basically tha kya? कि क्या प्राइवेट बैंक के ऑफिशियल्स को पब्लिक सर्वेंट माना जा सकता है इफ दे आर डीलिंग विद पब्लिक डे इन एंड आउट दैट वाज द मेजर इशू सो इसमें फैक्ट्स की कि इतने इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं है बट व्हाट द कोर्ट हैज सेड अबाउट द डेफिनेशन ऑफ पब्लिक सर्वेंट द ड्यूटी एंड द अदर रेगुलेशंस इन बैंकिंग रेगुलेशंस इन रिलेशन टू द Prevention of Corruption Act is very very critical. This question you can actually expect in coming up in your exam because it's very specific in nature and uh, also it's very interesting. The issue was uh, brought before the court as whether 
officials of a private bank can be covered under the meaning of public servants as defined under the provisions of prevention of corruption act 1988 and whether the respondent being private bank officials are public servants for the purpose of the said act were brought for consideration kya public private bank officials ko public servant kaha ja sakta hai for this act the central bureau of investigation yahan par केस फाइल हुआ था एज फाइल इन द कोर्ट तो मैंने आपको बताया था ना दी बी आई के पास पावर होती है दैट दे कैन ब्रिंग अप एंड प्रेजेंट एविडेंसेस इन कोर्ट सो उन्होंने वैसे ही फाइल करा दिस अपील विद द क्लेम ऑफ मेंटेनिंग देयर फाइल प्रोसिक्यूशन अगेंस्ट द रिस्पॉन्डेंट ऑफ द प्राइवेट बैंक आंसरिंग दिस इशू द ऑनरेबल बेंच हैज कंसिडर्ड द डेफिनेशन स्पेशली द क्लॉज एट ऑफ सेक्शन टू sub clause c uh, clause c of the uh, said act where the public servant means a person who holds an office by virtue of which he is authorized or required to perform any public duty here the expression office and public duty are found mentioned and in the same the public duty is defined in under section 2b of the said act which why wide which is wide to cover the discharge of duty for state public or community at large has an interest this is very very critical public servant jo apne office ke virtue ke through koi public duty perform kar raha ho aur jo section 2 b mein samjhaya hai ki public duty kya ho sakti hai anything that is done while the employee is discharging duty for state public or community welfare at large for their interest you get it right it's a, it's in fact it's a very wide uh interpretation of a public duty anything that has been done for state interest for public interest community welfare interest comes under the ambit of public duty <coughs> क्यों कोर्ट इतनी वाइड इंटरप्रिटेशन रखता है व्हेन समथिंग एडवर्सरियल हैज टू बी इनफोर्स्ड सो एज टू क्रिएट अ मोर होलिस्टिकली सेफर इन्वायरमेंट जब आपको पता है कि बीइंग इन द प्राइवेट सेक्टर यू कैन बी हेल्ड लाइबल अंडर द पब्लिक प्रिवेंशन ऑफ करप्शन एक्ट which is supposed to hold liable public servants for corruption but then aapka kaam aisa hai ki aap public duty perform kar rahe ho it is for the welfare of the community interest so you can still fall under the ambit so uh, you know apprehension bana rehta hai logo pe unke andar dar rehta hai Due, through all the trainings and seminars even private bank people are told ki agar aap kuch corrupt activities karte ho sanctions can be pulled against you uh sorry for the background noise uh moreover the court also considered several rulings for understanding the effect of the expressions office and public duty comes under the definition of public servant under the act moreover the fact remain undisputed that earlier to the enactment of the prevention of corruption act section 46a of the banking regulation act was having effect and it was considered that the officials of banking company as public servants for the purpose of indian penal code section 46a of the banking regulation act mein bhi yahi kaha gaya tha ki private bank ke employees ko bhi public servant hi mana jayega for in uh, in cases of corruption <coughs> for the purpose of ipc for pulling charges thus the prevention of corruption act would not have also enacted with the intent with the intent to have an opposite opposite effect it was implied ki bhale hi mentioned nahi hai par in support of section 46a of the banking regulation act which was in force pehle prevention of corruption act ke intent same hi tha thus the bench have decided that the said officials of the private bank are public servants for the purpose of poca by virtue of the provisions of the banking regulations act 1946 this is very very important by virtue of the provisions of the banking regulation act koi direct 
इंटरप्रिटेशन नहीं दी है बैंकिंग रेगुलेशन एक्ट के सपोर्ट में इंटरप्रिटेशन दी है कि उसमें ये मतलब था तो पीओसीए विल नॉट ऑब्वियसली स्पीक समथिंग अगेंस्ट विच द लेजिस्लेचर इट सेल्फ हैज इम्प्लीमेंट इन सम इन अ प्रीवियस स्टैचू दे नॉट मेक अ देर बी नो कॉन्फ्लिक्ट ऑफ इंटेंट दस द कोर्ट हैज अलाउड द अपील filed by cbi and dismissed the writ petition filed by uh, respondents in the appeal dismiss ho gayi thi private bank ke logo ko were considered public servants because they were performing public duty it was held that the accused chairman managing director and the executive director of global trust bank this was the bank a private bank before the amalgamation with the private sector bank oriental bank of commerce in fact it was a bank which was merged with a public sector bank which were served uh, were public servants for the purpose of prevention of corruption act by virtue of provisions section 46a of the banking regulation act 1949 and the prosecutions launched against them under the poca for transactions relating to period prior of amalgamation of global trust with the oriental bank of commerce were maintainable in law even if the transactions even if the act of offense was done previous to the merger they will still be considered public service so this was it from my end uh <clears throat> i think uh, more or less i have tried tried to very descriptively but in a very concise manner uh covered everything which is relevant for your exams Uh, I hope it helps. Thank you so much.